My name is Tom. I'm CEO at 4Ps, um, and I've baptized myself as well as chief evangelist of uh, Atomics, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, with uh, 4Ps, we typically help print operators succeed by implementing hassle-free automation. That's like the tagline. And then what does that mean and who, who are we really? Um, is I like to consider ourselves being a digital transformation agency that helps printers being, be more profitable by implementing digitization and automation. Um, and uh, that term digital transformation agency is something that in uh, very many industries is, is, is a type of business that uh, is common ground. If you talk about that in the print industry, they say, what, what is that you are? Digital transformation agency? Oh, but we've been doing digital things for ages, so we don't need a digital transformation agency. Now, um, going very shortly through the business uh, to, to, to understand for certain people that might know us, uh, us people that don't know us, we, we started off uh, actually um, as being a software distributor, um, hardcore PDF technology, the boring stuff, um, but the, the stuff that still keeps the production running. Um, what we've noticed from that point onwards, and um, it, it is relevant in this context, is that as technology matured, um, we've actually seen that uh, the implementation was more and more lagging. And specifically in our industry, people are used to buying products and technology, um, or they're even offered products and technology as part of any of the equipment that they purchase, and they fail to implement it. Um, and so uh, that's, uh, I think there's going to be a link with uh, AI on that as well. That's when, at some point, we said, OK, uh, distributing technology is interesting, um, but it really doesn't make sense if you don't implement it. Um, and so apart from just distributing it, we said, OK, let's help printers make the most use of the technology that is available to them that often they've got laying on the shelf from different brands doing the same thing and that actually being completely underused. Um, and, and so as 4Ps, that's where we started to position ourselves more as, as a digital transformation and, and, and automation agency. And from that point onwards, we've been sitting on the sidelines saying, you know, when is somebody, when is one of these software vendors going to stand up and come up with the next generation of software platforms? Um, because it seems that everybody's talking about AI, everybody's talking about SaaS and cloud technologies, uh, but at print, we're still debating whether we should actually purchase that last piece of software, whether it's properly implemented, uh, whether how it should be connected from one or to the other. And so we thought that there was a, a, a big hiatus there um, in, in um, more innovative platforms, cloud-based platforms that would leverage um, uh, the capabilities of the cloud um, in moving some of that uh, production and production management uh, for print to the cloud. Um, so uh, essentially, that is what we uh, have been doing, and I've been going a, a little bit too fast uh, with moving these slides. But when you talk, uh, when we talk to customers, we, we often see they have a product available already. It is very often the implementation that is missing, um, and it is really the product and the implementation that only provides uh, the solution. Um, these are some of the customers that we have done projects for. And the reason why I mention these is because very often they have a link to uh, e-commerce. Uh, there, there are typically faster paced um, production facilities. Um, and I believe, generally speaking, that is going to be a trend. Yes, the Gen Zs, they might have a shorter attention span, and you can complain about that. But as the attention span shortens, you have to adapt to that. So you have to be quicker in grabbing their attention and responding to that attention um, uh, rather than moaning about it. You know, it's a reality that you're going to face. And so um, as, as these platforms um, in the way that we do business becomes increasingly important, we'll have to also pick up the pace in which, in, in which we do business and in which we communicate with the customers. That is what um, Atomics is about. Atomics is um, an integration 
integration platform as a service that connects printers, sellers, um, buyers, and manufacturers, um, essentially to improve operational performance um, and to make better uh, business decisions. It is to move the print industry from mass production to a mass customization industry. Um, and I think that that's, you, the, the brief of this presentation said that this should not be bluntly self-promoting. Um, I apologize, I'm bluntly self-promoting. Um, but the context of this is relevant in the sense of the object, uh, in, 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 the, um, in, in the subject of the, the presentation today. Because um, as we said, uh, there, there is it, the industry, or at least the way that we're, that we're doing business is changing. The way that we need to interact with the customers is changing. The way that we need to produce is changing. The essence of what the original invention of print was about to productively mass produce a Bible um, at quantity of thousands yeah, is now turned upside down in a model where we're trying to um, make mass objects, coffee mugs, white coffee mugs, and we're looking at making those unique, personalized objects that uh, appeal to every individual around here. That is what the industry is moving towards. Um, and uh, profitably, profitably produce a quantity of one, um, I believe, is the holy grail. Um, but I believe that there's also uh, aspects uh, just in between that, in a gray area. I think that uh, when people talk about run rates going down, that is and essentially goes down to the same subject. And I believe that um, AI has a role to play in that. Um, it is also because of the background that I just talked to you about that people have been asking me for about, you know, since the hype started, uh, people started asking me, you must have an opinion about that, um, which kind of uh, made me conclude that I'm regarded as an opinionated person. Um, so uh, it also made me reflect and say, you know, <laughs> ask me about AI once more <laughs> and <laughs> something bad will happen, let's put it that way. Um, if you look up, so I'm not an AI expert. I'm not even an, a, a well-educated person. I'm a high school dropout. So um, while I'm not a Gen Z, I'm nearly 50 years old, um, I do find my knowledge on the internet. Um, and when, when you really look at what AI is about, again, what Finn was saying is that AI has been around for many years. Um, and if it is only uh, the gimmicks on, on generative AI that really have grabbed our attention. And so I've really started, as people were asking me these questions, I've started to look at what are really the practical uses for our industry? What is it really that we should be looking at, we as a technology provider, as a consultant to our customers, if next time uh, somebody asks Jules the question, um, rather than shooting somebody in the head, what is the smart answer that I should come up with? Um, and uh, you never should look very far when, uh, you know, you, sh you should try to look in your own vicinity uh, for, for answers. Um, really, the answer that I've come up with is it's all about automation. Um, it is about automation, and it is about, um, as a business, trying to be as competitive, as productive, and as profitable as possible in a changing environment where run rates are going down, where um, 
uh, a customer interaction is not necessarily always dr driven by a human person, where the speed of human uh, of, of customer interaction is uh, uh, significantly increasing, where you don't have the time to manually retouch, prepare whatever uh, orders that you currently, whatever manip manipulations that you currently do um, on uh, orders of your customers, where you don't have the time to do all of that. Um, you you need to look at uh, smart technologies that can help you with that. And I believe that some of these technologies are going to be more and more AI driven. I don't think it's going to be a revolution. It is going to gradually be introduced in some of the tools that you're seeing little by little. Um, and I want to give a couple of examples. Um, there's some areas that we actually see that happening in today. Um, and I think that these examples, they're here today and they're here to stay. This is not a hype. This is something that has started and that will continue to evolve. And so if you look at customer engagement, um, again, Finn mentioned chatbots. Um, a chatbot is not just an interface to uh, a system that is doing something, that, that is you know, kind of smartly answering you. No, it is linked and connected to uh, a backend system. Um, and so it is there as an agent and say, you know, you could say, do you have, do, do you print labels? Well, yes, we do print labels and here is our catalog of labels that we print. Um, but it is also, where is my order? And so if that chatbot needs to know where your order is, it needs to be connected to the rest of your backend system um, and, uh, and things like that. So it is there as a, a, a person to alleviate any human interaction because, as Marcus was saying, there's going to be less and less people to actually do the job, um, so that needs to be sped up. Um, but in order for it to be smart, it really needs to be connected to the entire technology stack um, of any company, in this particular case, a printer. Um, and then it's going to be able to provide us insights because yes, uh, this tools like this, um, uh, these customer engagement tools, they are there to alleviate the work of any customer service representative. Um, but there will still be a customer service representative at some point to escalate something to. Yeah. However, that customer service representative is also going to interrogate the system um, and might also uh, tab into that knowledge. Just one example. The other example is a creative one. Um, and again, uh, I believe that these are the most popular examples today and the ones that everybody, everybody has been playing around with. Um, it's the ones that you see on some of the uh, print-related e-commerce platforms as well. Um, I have a dog. Um, and so today, uh, with generative AI, um, you can put that dog in about any environment and make something cute and funny uh, yeah, from it, and then print that on a coffee mug. Yeah. Now, you can do that with your mother-in-law as well. Um, I prefer my dog on my coffee mug rather than my mother-in-law, um, but that's a personal preference. Uh, this is just one example, but you could apply that on design templates as well. You could say, I want a annual report, um, and today these things, they are relatively simple template-based, um, but uh, through prompting you and, and, and through uh, 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 more data connectivity, you could make that more smart, you could make that more personalized, you can make um, uh, other examples from that and say, you know, I need some help with um, a visually compelling business proposal um, and um, you will uh, get something designed there in a certain way and you'll be able to say you to say today, I want to uh, apply that to my corporate guidelines with these colors and things like that. So again, it is something that helps you um, be more productive in designing something. It's making that uh, design and, and, and compelling design more um, um, uh, accessible 
to non-professional users and still come up with something that actually looks quite professional and, and is uh, relatively well. The generative AI thing also has today already a very practical application um, when it comes to some of the uh, production uh, constraints that you have. And again, there is a very practical example for that, um, which is uh, pixel creation. Uh, Fortunately, cameras in uh, phones have become significantly better, and so it's become less of an issue. Still, you see a lot of crappy images there with uh, uh, bad artifacts uh, in there. And so generative AI has a very practical example of creating higher quality images of you know, whatever source image that you have that isn't all that great. And to go even more into nitty-gritty technical details, it will also help us to create, for instance, um, better bleed. Uh, today, you've, uh, uh, people create bleed in all different uh, ways uh, by stretching pixels, by um, adding a, a color surface. Uh, generative AI will enable you, uh, enables you to a certain extent today um, to make that even, sm uh, even smarter. Again. Not very exciting, uh, yeah, but a very practical use of uh, how to use generative AI in that context. Now, um, the, the next part on, on how to use AI would be to create smarter um, layouts, print layouts. Not a design layout, but a, but a print layout. And you see all sorts of technologies being used there as well. These technologies exist already today. Uh, the terms uh, used are ganging, nesting, impositioning, uh, yeah, and these kind of things where you're combining orders based on a number um, of, of data points. Um, I would argue whether that is really AI. It's a very smart algorithm, and certain people will corner it as AI-based technology. Um, I don't really consider that to be AI because there is no, learn no real learning process in that. It is just a simple, um, uh, uh, not, not just a simple, it is a very good algorithm, um, but uh, there's, there's nothing really AI uh, about it. It becomes interesting, though, if you look at that from a, a business management point of view. And I think that that's where the true value lies. Um, your famous detective, uh, I'm, giving him, I'm giving him to you. He's yours. He's been yours uh, yeah, uh, all along. Um, but it's, it's all about the data. Um, and there, there's going to be a couple of cliches here uh, that will follow up on one another. Um, it, you need the data to build something. However, at the same time, we're drowning in information today. We have the data. We've got loads of data. However, we don't know where it is. We don't know how to extract it. We don't know how to visualize it. We don't know how to deal with it. We, we're starving for knowledge. However, we've got all the data that we need, at least in theory. Um, and so the ability to access trusted data and turning that data into information and turning that information into action is where I believe for our industry is going to be the true value. Because we know how long something has produced. We know what is the smartest way to get something on a sheet or to get something on, on a piece of paper. We know all the individual steps. However, um, in our industry, everything is siloed. Everything is not connected. Um, and while the possibilities are there to do that, uh, the, the printers very often fail to build a strategy around that. Um, that is what is going to uh, make the difference. To be able to ask a system, what price does my competitor offer? Should I produce this in-house or should I outsource? What is the most efficient way to produce this order? Which machine should I invest in? In order to do that, we need to gather uh, uh, data faster, we need to make data more insightful faster, and we, make, we, we need to make data more actionable in an automatic way in order to increase competitiveness, 
increase productivity and increase profitability. That's it for me. Thanks very much.